Hello again folks, uh, let me introduce you to Jesse. Um, Jesse helps me out with my fly tying requirements from time to time. She gets regularly brushed out and the resultant fur, very very useful, nice grey colour, very very useful for tying quite a number of flies. Sit. Good girl. Um, so the resultant under four, as I say, is very useful for tying flies. And um, but there's that doggy smell from it, of course, needless to say. So to get rid of that doggy smell, what I do is I soak it in fabric conditioner overnight. Easy. Good girls. Good girls. And um, then what I do is this. Now, oh, Jesse's under for after a good soaking for a couple of nights in fabric conditioner it is now going to be dried out. I squeezed it between a couple of sheets of newspaper to get most of the, the liquid out, but what I'm going to do now is just put it in this little dog bowl here, feeding bowl, metal feeding bowl, and it goes on top of the stove, and that'll be dried out in a couple of hours, and uh, then we'll do a little bit more work with it. Well now, Jesse's under fur is completely dried out. Here it is. And uh, we can dispense with the bowl. And I might as well tell you, it smells a lot sweeter than it did when it first came off the dog. So, soaking it overnight in the old um, fabric conditioner. You can choose uh, your own favorite fragrance <laughs> and um, as you can see there's quite a lot of it so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put it all into this plastic bag here well almost all of it and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to show you how I make up a really nice dubbing for all kinds of flies so we have enough there to keep me going for a long, long time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom the camera in a little so you can see what I'm doing here. This um, under four on its own is perfectly fine for quite a number of flies. Um, one or two that come to mind, say an Adams dry fly for instance, which requires a grey dubbed body and um, I think the original was tied either I think it was muskrat for but this is perfectly um, a perfect substitute and um, there are many flies tied with a grey body and um, some of the other names escape me temporarily but that color there is just fine for any number of flies but what I like to do is I like to mix it with other materials I'll just use would say that much there and um, to get different colors and different sort of effects so here we have a hair's mask and uh, I've cut quite a lot of this before but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut some of the um, guard hair and under fur from this Hair's mask. As you're probably all aware, the hair's ear, the original hair's ear fly, of course, relied on hair from the base of the hair's ear, as the name implies, of course. And I find that any of the hair from a hair's mask has some indefinable sort of attraction for trout I don't know what it does but it's just got it's a sort of a magical ingredient if you like I use quite a lot of it so what I'm going to do here now is we've got our hairs mask and Jesse's under fur and I'm going to put them into this little coffee grinder 
I'd recommend anybody whose time flies to get a coffee grinder, a very useful little machine. And what I'm going to do here now is just going to mix the two together. It only takes a few seconds. Just like that. And now when we take it out, we have a totally different color, a really nice color. And this dubbing here is ideal for, again, for many, many flies. Now this is just one example. Um, good idea then to just maybe put this in a separate container or a separate bag. Now you can add more or less to that, whatever you fancy doing. Uh, to get whatever your color you like and we'll tr just do another here just um, uh, one second now I'm gonna get some stuff out of here so here we have some sort of olive I would guess it's seals for and it's kind of a yellowy olive picricky color and then just a little bit of darker stuff there again so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix those together same way. Don't overdo it with the machine, just run it for a few seconds because if you overdo it, you'll, you'll chop the stuff da down so that it becomes difficult to use. So there we are. Two really nice colors there now. And what I'm going to do with these two is I'm going to tie two little flies just to show you an example of um, how nice and effective these are as fly tying materials thanks to Jesse and a long dead seal and a long dead hair. So now just before I tie those couple of flies with uh, that dubbing actually while I think of it um, suggestions for a name for this dubbing now I know it's only as I roved out sort of thing, but like, it's not important. But if you could think of a name for the dubbing, if, uh, as it relates to say the dog or what I've mixed with it or anything, or any suggestions for the name of the dubbing, it would be interesting to hear what you have to say about it. Um, as well as that, before I tie the two flies, I'd like to just extend my gratitude to everybody who's making the channel a success. Um, I really appreciate your involvement in the channel and all the, the lovely comments and the lovely suggestions that I'm getting. It's really, um, since I started doing this more, concentrating more on the flight time stuff, it's kind of generated a bit more, well, it was always a, a level of positivity there, but it's generated more positivity and I just, uh, again, just want to extend my gratitude. Uh, thank you all so much for um, contributing. Thanks again. Now, First off, I'm going to tie um, a gold head hair's ear variant, I suppose, being that it's not just totally hair's ear, it has Jesse's under fur and uh, just a couple of other little variations, but uh, that won't make it any the less effective. So what I have here is a size 12 um, hook and a 3.5 millimeter tungsten bead. So that will give us the necessary weight to get down fast. The tying thread I'm using is Semperfly waxed, classic waxed in black 80. Right. This is simplicity itself for a fly tire. Start off just behind the bead, trap the bead in place basically by enough turns of thread. You can tie these up in a few minutes. Now I'm going to use this for a tail. This is just um, hackle fibers, grizzle hackle fibers. And it goes a tail. Now I cut that to just square it behind the bead. Just like that. And now, gold wire. Now this is fairly heavy duty wire. It's heavy and thick. Now you don't necessarily have to use the same kind of wire, but that's what I could find just handy here. I have other stuff that's a bit lighter, but 
it'll make no real difference. Let's tie that down securely. And now our dubbing, the Jesse dubbing or whatever we want to call it. Uh, as you'll see, because it's the dog's under four, it adheres very easily to the thread with just gentle twist of index finger and the thumb. And now, now I'm going to go clockwise, or in that direction, it'll sink the wire down through the dubbing. Four or five turns until you get to just behind the bead. Tie that down. Snip it off. You're going to need a fairly heavy duty scissors to cut heavy wire like this. Now, and we're finished. Now you can use a different color of thread. If you wanted, you could use orange thread, which when you finish it off then would have a little orange spot behind the bead if you think that would be any great addition. And I'm just making sure it's secure. I've given it three whip finishes. You could add a little, if you want, like this. Um, just rub a little. This is hard as nails, also known as hard as a horse heart. Here we are. Yeah. And that is ultra secure and won't go, be going any place. So there you have it. That's the nymph tied with the dubbing. Simple and yet super effective. I'd be confident fishing this fly in any river or even any lake, any place. Right, now I turn to the wet fly and size 12 hook. And the tying thread I'm using here is Semper Fly 80 and it's olive colored. And I start off here just behind the eye. Bring our thread down to where a barb would be on a barbed hook. This, these hooks happen to be barbless. Now, the gold wire yet again, a uh, heavy duty gold wire. I didn't buy this in a tackle shop, I bought it in one of those discount shops in the sewing section. They had all kinds of colors of wire, I'll show you examples. Um, as purple. Um, second now, I'm trying to read from here. Copper and a, a few other colours around the place there and uh, they come very cheap but they do exactly the same thing as the wire you'll buy in a fly shop or a tackle shop or whatever you want to call it so now I'm tightening that down, binding it down so it won't move around the place now next the dubbing that I mixed up I mixed up um, Jesse's under fur with a bit of olive seals fur. As you can see, it's got a really nice, kind of a natural olive looking colour. And again, it dubs on really easily onto the thread. Or so that's um, now, depending on how much pressure you put on the dubbing between your index finger and your thumb, will determine how hairy the fly is if you like. The less pressure you have more sticking out, more pressure you tighten the dubbing and make it tighter but I find that as if you if you do dub it on tight after you've caught a couple of fish in it it'll start to loosen and it becomes even more effective because I think it kind of gives a kind of a leggy buggy impression to the fly when it's 
hanging out all over the place. Now the gold wire again in the same rotation as the dubbing. Now you can snip it off. Now, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a, a snipe feather for a nice soft hackle. So I'm going to prepare it like this. Now, that's how I prefer, prepare the feathers, uh, any soft hackles, generally speaking. Let's snip it there. Tie it in. And now, and pull them back, the fibers like that. Turn. And the whip finish. And again, just so you can see how it's done, again, I'm just going to apply a little bit of hard as nails to the thread. Not necessary really when you're tying whip finishes because they won't open anyway, but just so you can see how it's done. And there you go folks, that there is a wet fly that I, again, would be confident fishing in any river, any place. I just know from experience that it doesn't follow, it's not a, an exact fly pattern if you like. It, um, it's just something I made up as I went along, but it has the vital ingredients. It has a nice body and it has a nice soft hackle. And once it looks like food, the trout will take it. Make no mistake about that. So you don't have to stick rigidly to patterns. You can just diversify and do your own thing and they will, nine times out of 10, work equally as well. So, shin shin folks. Um, fly tying is not rocket science, just a matter of Developing few simple skills, you can use virtually anything to tie flies. The reason I tie flies the way I do is because I tied flies ever before there was an availability like there is now of materials and I had to make do with what was available, which was very, very, very little. So I learned to um, use different materials together. I know what works. There, are, It's a simple process really. It's um, there's a tendency uh, in some quarters to overcomplicate it and make it seem like it's um, some dark art or something. It's not. It's very, very simple stuff. Time flies is relatively easy. Just a few simple mechanical skills, few materials that you can pick up from your pet dog and your local um, pound shop or dollar store or whatever you call it and you can tie effective flies. There are very few occasions where you will need specific patterns to catch fish. General generic patterns work for me 90% of the time. There are occasions where I will have to use a specific pattern because the trout have reached a point where they've keyed in on a specific insect. Generally speaking, that's later on in the season when trout are well fed up, they're fat, they can afford to be choosy. But for the first half of any fishing season, generics will work all the time. And even for the rest of the season, they'll work most of the time. Um, I'll get to, at some point in the video down the road, 
um, talking about specific patterns and the necessity of having a specific pattern at a particular time. But like I say, and we'll just repeat it, generally speaking, all you need are generics and simple stuff makes simple flies. So Shinwell Umse Arisht, that's it from me again. Be sure to click the like button and if you're not already a subscriber consider subscribing i make videos like this all the time and um, i hope you find them interesting and um, if you'd like to support my channel i'll leave a link in the description to my patreon page where any little bit of support would be much appreciated so